Hey dudes, Jason here. Um, and today we're going to be covering the process that we're using in class this term, uh, which for those of you who don't know, maybe some external subscribers, which always great to have you guys here. Thank you so much. Um, we are taking a look at um, deep edging photo pre-existing photographs. We're using some Renaissance paintings and then animating the footage that we cut up. All right, so we're gonna start from the very beginning. This tutorial is going to be covering the deep edging process, and then I'll be using the same file as we progress towards the final animation. All right, so I'm just going to hit file and I'm going to hit place embedded, right? We discussed the differences between embedded and linked. Linked, reading information from somewhere else in your computer. Pro keeps the, um, the file size small, however, can copy that file into a different computer without the linked file and it will give you a missing footage error. Embedded, Pro, wherever you take the file, you always have the footage. Con, it increases the file size. Okay, um, so that's just the basics. All right, so jump into downloads. I'm just going to place this image over here. Um, I will place a link in the comments below for those of you who want it. Um, so when we bring an image into Photoshop, we've got this blue bounding box. We can't do anything until we hit enter. And now we can actually move this image around and play with it as we see fit. All right. Um, the first thing we'll notice when we bring this in on our um, layer panel is we've got this little icon over here. All right. That means it's a smart object. It means we're not going to be able to use our selection tools on it until we rasterize it. All right. Also, it's always a good idea to make backups of your files as you go so that if you break something along the line, you don't have to start from the very beginning. So I'm going to hit Command or Control J, J for Juliet, um, and that will make a copy. I'm just going to call this uh, Cherub. I think that's how you spell Cherub. Um, and I'm going to right click this layer and I'm going to say rasterize. Okay, so that locks its information in place and I can actually show you the difference or the major difference between these two files. With a smart object, if I just quickly hit command or control T to free transform it, I can drag it all the way down, hit enter, and then free transform it and bring it all the way back up again without losing any information. All right. If I do this with my rasterized layer, again, Command T for me on a Mac, bring it down, hit enter, bring it back up again. Photoshop has discarded all of that information. All right. It essentially tries to save as much space as possible. So that is a great way to screw up your images. Let me just undo that. And that is the major difference. All right, so I'm just going to select this layer, uh, turn the visibility back on so I can lock it and then I can turn it off again. And uh, we're gonna be working on our cherub layer here. Okay, so the goal of this is to break up um, this body in such a way that I could then animate it inside of After Effects, all right? So first of all, we need to then separate our assets onto their own layers. We then need to fill in the space or the background behind that so that there's no sort of missing information. Um, and then we obviously need to make sure that our pieces still fit together thematically, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, is quickly introduce you guys to our selection tools. The very first one I'm gonna show you is the quick selection tool. All right, uh, as you can see in the little video, you simply click and drag. All right, so as I understand it, how this tool works is it um, reads the color value or the color information, and then where that has a drastic change, that's where it determines the, uh, the drop or the, the change or the border to end. All right, you can see I've got a little bit of extra information here that I don't want. With my selection tool, you'll see I've got a couple of options here in my top left corner. Currently it's set to the little plus sign. I don't know if you can see that, but it is the add to selection option. Next to that, we have got the subtract from selection option, and that's what I can use to get rid of this. For those of you who want to use your shortcuts, shift will always be an additive modifier and alt or option will always be a subtractive modifier. Okay, so I'm holding down shift now just to reselect that. Okay, another selection tool that we have is above that, the lasso tool, all right? This is essentially a freeform drawing selection tool. Uh, and you'll see that currently mine is set to the additive mode. I'm actually just going to set it to the normal function so you can see how that works. You'll notice then as soon as I click and drag, uh, it deselects what I had and it gives me marching ants around the area that I just drew over. Okay. However, shift and alt or option still do the same thing. So if I wanted to add certain areas of information, I could hold down shift, 
or remove information by holding down Alt or Option to do that. Okay, if I wanna get rid of my selection, I can always hit Command or Control D to deselect that. I hit Control or Command Z to undo. Um, and then under my quick selection tool, um, actually, my lasso tool. Ah, interesting. Okay, so we'll just stick with that then. Um, cool. So with one of my selection tools uh, <laughs> selected, I am going to right click over the layer. Uh, and before I do that, I actually just want to zoom in and make sure that I'm not leaving out any uh, potentially useful information. So I'll just grab a little bit more here. Um, and we're going to get into the process of removing or refining our selection next. I know that there are faster ways to do this, but this is how uh, like my method works. So again, if you know a faster way or a simpler method, by all means, drop it in the comments below and I will update the video accordingly. Obviously then with a shout out to you for that information. All right. Um, cool. So I'm kind of going to do this. And what I think I'm going to do just to make sure that my legs work is I'm actually going to treat the bottom, the buttocks, the bum, as a separate selection. So essentially what I'm then going to do is I'm going to have these two legs. Um, they'll be on their own layers. I'll paint in some stubs below them so that they can move. And then we've got our torso with our little bum. Uh, and that's not going to be distorted or having lost any information at all. Okay, yeah, so I'll just do something like that. All right, so with my selection tool, I'm going to right click and I have a couple of options here, right? Obviously first, deselect. Select inverse, this means that it's going to select everything outside of our marching ants rather than on the inside. Um, and I'm gonna focus here on layer via copy or layer via cut. Layer via copy is a less destructive method, um, but I think it would be easier for our project to do layer via cut because then we can always paint in the information behind the areas that we are removing. So I'm going to do layer by cut and you'll notice then as soon as I turn off my cherub layer, I've got this leg floating in space, which is now called layer one. So I'm just going to call this leg top and then I'll call the other leg leg bottom when we get there. Okay, so when I turn this off, uh, you'll see that I do have some very garish information that I'm going to want to get rid of. Um, but it's a little difficult to see exactly where I want to erase or paint out that information on a white background. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually just going to quickly unlock my background. Now it's called layer zero. I'm going to grab my paint bucket tool, if I can find it. It's hidden underneath. Uh, it's not hidden underneath the gradient tool. Interesting, it would seem that my layout is slightly strange. Rather than trying to sort of like figure out why, I'm just gonna grab my brush tool. I'm gonna make it absolutely massive. Uh, I'm doing that by clicking the closed square bracket. All right, so I can make it smaller using my open square bracket. And these can be found directly above your enter or return key and then slightly to the left. All right, so I'm just gonna paint this background black. Uh, and you'll see that as soon as I do that, I've got a better indicator of where this information is. Just relock that and work on our leg. Okay, so now one might think that the first step we want to do is grab the eraser tool and start working at these edges, all right, which you're not entirely wrong. Um, let me just make this super harsh so we can see. However, if I am erasing and I erase too much information, but I don't realize it for whatever reason, I go too many steps forward and I can't undo, well, tough, gonna have to sort of like reselect, go back to your original smart object and do it all over again. So instead, we're going to be using a mask. All right, so with our top leg layer selected, I'm going to click on this little mask layer down here. I've always thought it looks like the Japanese flag. So if I say Japanese flag, that's what I'm talking about. As soon as I do, you'll see then that I get this little white thumbnail. All right, it's very important that we realize that we can actually click on both of these thumbnails and work on either of them, all right? So we need to make sure we're working on the correct thumbnail at any given time, okay? Now, the cool thing about this thumbnail is when I grab my brush and I just bring that down a little bit, you'll see that we then automatically have our colors set to black and white. Now, the black is going to hide information well, the white, and I can swap by either clicking this little button over here or hitting my X key, X-ray key, uh, the white will paint it back in. 
Okay, so very useful to have a non-destructive method. So what I'm going to do is we will tend, especially for deep edging, to zoom in quite close, all right, usually to the absolute pixel level, and start softening these edges. That is what deep edging is. It's making sure that we don't have these exceptionally harsh cuts that then look as though they have been cut and pasted. All right, so the first thing that we'll do is just use a pretty hard brush. We can set that up here in our brush settings. I'm going to set my hardness to 100. Uh, I can adjust the size as much as I want. Um, and I'm just going to go around and paint out all this extra information. So I'm going to time lapse that ahead and then we'll jump into the next step after that. Okay, so I'm just, as you see, using my hard brush to kind of just get rid of the most egregious uh, information that I don't need. Oh, listen to that storm. Absolutely love it. Um, I hope you can actually hear me then over this. I'm sure you will. Um, okay, so I'm using my hard brush to just get rid of the most egregious information. Um, I'm not going too close to the edge because we don't want to, again, make that cut out effect. We want to soften those edges. So my next step is I'm going to bring this down. Excuse me. Uh, go away, go away, I'm trying to do something here. Um, I'm going to go into my brush options and I'm going to bring my hardness down uh, probably about zero actually. I think that would work just fine. Um, and you'll see that when I do this, when I go close to my edges, bring my brush down slightly. All right. Um, when I click and drag, you'll see that I am sort of creating a bit of a gradient, right? So if I turn off my background, you can actually see, uh, zoom in a little bit more, that the opacity is slowly transitioning. Let me make my brush slightly larger so we can see a, a better example. Slowly transitioning from visible to invisible. All right. And that is our deep edging process. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is again, I'm going to go around the edges here. Um, what we can also do is play with the opacity of our brush. All right, so if I find, for example, let's work on this big toe. All right, so that's already got a lot of information on the side removed. If I bring my opacity down, I can either do this by clicking and dragging. I can also click and type. Or, for those of you who are lazy like me, you can use the numbers at the top of your keyboard. Zero will bring your opacity up to 100%, nine will bring it to 90, eight to 80, and if you push it fast, 55 by five quite quickly, 20% is two, etc. Okay, so now with this done, I actually also then have control. I can then go over these edges um, more often without it being as sort of definitive. All right, and I can just make sure again, um, that when I bring this information now back in, it's not going to look copy pasted or cut and pasted rather. Okay, so again, I'm gonna speed lapse or time lapse through this and we will see you on the other side. Okay, there we go. Um, so some of you might, uh, like, if you don't know how to go about doing this, R for the rotation tool, and then I'm kind of just holding down shift and dragging my mouse around the edges. Um, so yeah, fairly rushed job, but if I take a look, not too bad. Uh, here might be exam like an example of where I've taken too much information away. So again, let's jump over to my white brush. Let me bring it down to about 15% opacity. And let's just paint that. Actually, let's just bring it up to 100% and see what we're working with. Okay, so it was actually just a, a fault in the selection uh, process. So we can just sort of paint over that and ignore it for now, <laughs> like a good lazy animator. Okay, um, so like I said, a bit of a rush job, but I don't want this to be too long. I do also have a life to go and live um, somewhat. So if I now turn on my information here, you can actually then see uh, where we've gotten rid of that information. Okay, and this would then obviously be the case for all of my limbs, uh, torso, etc. Okay, so the next step I'm about to show you, I would actually really only do once I've cut up the entire image, but for brevity's sake, I'm going to show it to you now as well. Okay, so we've got this leg. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to lock and hide it for now so I don't mess around with it. We're technically done with it for now. 
All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a duplicate of this cherub. All right. So command and control J, uh, cherub copy, and let's just rename this as sky. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, we are going to pretend that this cherub is actually no longer here. So the easiest way for us to actually do that would be let us actually just do a very rough selection and then just delete the information uh, in order to simulate the step that we would be on when we get to this phase of our animation. Let's do a very quick, very quick selection over here um, and for our arrow as well. And as you can see, it has now selected some of the background. So I'm then just going to hold down my option or my alt key and deselect that information so that it stays. Okay, right click, layer via cut. Let us then hide that. And this is kind of what we would be looking at. Okay, so what we're going to do now to paint in this information is we've got a couple of tools at our disposal. Now it's been a very long time since I did any sort of like photography touch up work. So if again, you know like better ways to do this or if you know uh, intricacies of the tools that I'm not covering, by all means, let me know. I'd love to learn some more. Okay, so what we're going to take a look at first is the clone stamp tool, right? S is the shortcut for that. Okay, wow, there is a lot hidden under here. Interesting. Okay, so we've got our clone stamp tool and how the clone stamp tool works, making sure I'm on the correct layer, is I need to hold down option in order to select where the information I'm about to paint in comes from. All right, so let me bring my brush. Uh, let's bring that hardness up to about 60% or so. So I'm dragging information from here. And if I click and drag, you can see that I've got this little uh, white cross in that blue area that I sort of pasted my selection, right? Notice how wherever my brush goes, it moves equidistant to that brush. Okay, so it's important to remember that it's always going to um, be equidistant. And as soon as I pass over areas that were black to begin with, I'm going to start getting these harsh edges. Okay, the clone stamp tool is actually a fantastic tool to use when you're extending your borders. So if I create my piece of information there and I were to just click and drag and uh, essentially just keep clicking and dragging, I could essentially then paint in all this information as I go. All right, so with a little bit of work, I could fill in all these uh, edges around the side and then have a full screen for my cherub. All right, however, one of the cons of the uh, clone stamp tool is that it doesn't do anything to help blend your information. It's literally just there and it's quite clear where that information came from or where the, the touch up has been done. All right. So another option that we have if we hit J is the healing brush tool. Right. If we click and drag, we also then have, wow, they've just hidden everything in here. Uh, so we've got the healing brush tool over here, all right? Uh, if yours is not set up like this, you'll still find the spot healing brush tool below that. Okay, so the healing brush tool, as far as I understand, correct me if I am wrong, please. Um, how I understand it is it reads the information around the area that I'm painting in, and it does its best to find a median so that it can actually blend that information in. Now, obviously it's looking quite stark over our black background, but notice as I paint in over the leg, that that information kind of works. It doesn't look too sort of blurred or um, intrusive, All right? So that is also an option for us. And then finally, as I said earlier, we've got our spot healing tool. And these are the only ones I'm going to be taking a look at. Uh, spot healing tool works pretty much the same way as the clone stamp does in that I need to select the area. Uh, oh, no, it's automatically gonna do that for me, sorry. Uh, is it the... Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I got myself confused. Healing brush tool, I can set information and it will then copy paste the information and do its best to find a medium or a median, whichever one, so that that doesn't look too cut and pasted. Uh, and then we have the spot healing tool, all right? Very powerful. Both of these tools can be used quite effectively to remove blemishes or wrinkles or anything like that. Now, the spot healing tool does not use uh, a predetermined set of information. I simply click and drag. You'll see that I get this sort of like ghost print of where I am painting and everything that I then paint, it's going to source the information around it and then paste it where I currently am. 
All right, so that would actually be, as far as I can tell, let me make this brush huge and just paint over like that. Give it some time to think. Okay, so we can see, obviously, we get some aberration errors over there where we just over duplicate all this information. So it would require a little bit more of a finesse, obviously, but that is how we would go about filling in this space. Now, the other thing, uh, the other tool that we have access to is the content aware tool. Uh, but Lord knows that I have no idea where it is in this setup. So I will be back to you in a moment. Okay, so I had to, oh, I did actually see it earlier, sorry, I just had to search for it up there. So this is what the icon looks for the content aware move tool. All right, so how the content aware move tool works, again, I don't know all the intricacies, but just as kind of what I've gone in from playing around with it. I need to click and drag in order to set out an area of information, which I'm then going to move and essentially just hit enter to drop that information where it is. Now you'll notice that both areas, if I do that again, both areas are going to change. So pay attention to here as well as where that information came from, right? So that column being that one there, right? It changes the information of both so that it looks a little bit more, hit control D to quickly deselect that, it looks a little bit more natural. All right, so what I'm going to then do is, let me just grab my spot healing tool again, um, bring that all the way down. Notice there that we've got this sort of like dark area that kind of doesn't look in, like uh, it looks fairly out of place. So I'm just gonna paint over that and that's gonna fill it in for me. So you'll notice that the shortcomings of each of our tools can actually be quite easily um, re uh, rep not reprimanded, uh, repaired, overcome, whatever the word is, counted by our other um, sort of like healing brush tools or clone stamp tool, etc. So, like I said, uh, let me just sort of just paint this in for now so that we can take a look at the asset, like the leg that I now cut. Uh, so if I now place this leg over here, right? Now, if we take a look at our edges, these edges are nice and soft. You'll see that I've left this very hard. And that's because, I'm just gonna turn my chair back on. I want to paint in a stub of information down here. And it doesn't help that I soften the edges because I'm gonna have to soften them again anyway. All right. So I think what I'm going to use is the Content Aware tool, uh, Content Aware Move tool, which looks like that. And I'm actually just going to grab this information here like so, this should work. Click and drag, <laughs> okay, this is actually a very important thing. Notice how I'm on the sky layer, therefore, when I try to move this scene, um, it is stuck moving the actual sky information. I need to be able to, I need to make sure that I'm on my leg layer, and I need to make sure I'm on the leg thumbnail. All right, because if I'm on the mask layer, it's just gonna move the mask information. Whereas if I'm on the leg layer, uh, could I use tool because layer is locked, of course. Um, I can then move that leg information. And now you'll see this, this just means that my brush, uh, the my mask is kind of covering that out. So if you see anything like this, don't worry. It's not the end of the world. We can just brush it out again. So I'm just going to scale that up. I'm gonna hit return and it's going to do its best to uh, kind of like do what it can with that information. If I dive back on to my spot healing brush, I'm just going to scale that down. Uh, let's smooth that out. Again, falling for my own mistake. Uh, brush tool, white ink, and let's just paint back in some information. So actually, let me undo that horrific job I just did with the clone stamp tool there. Um, and I don't want to erase too much information, obviously. Um, it does look like we're getting a lot of aberration over here. So let's see what we can do. Again, working on the, <laughs> accidentally working on the mask layer. So let's just make sure I'm always actually practicing what I preach. Okay, so I'm just gonna soften this out a little bit. Very rough. Um, okay, so now then if I bring my cherub back on, you'll see that that information is obviously now sitting further below the body. And this is actually going to be sitting like this, all right? So once I soften the edges of my bum and I soften the edges of my leg, it's going to look fairly similar to what it did before, all right? As best as I can make it in the time that I have. And that is also going to then allow 
for me to adjust or animate this without any pieces of information clipping from behind the main body. All right, so I'm not gonna cut this leg up any further. I'm going to use the, the puppet pin warp tool um, to animate this. But if I was going to for like more of a cut out feel, I could obviously cut it at the knee, do the exact same paint a stub in process um, and essentially carry on from there. Okay, so what that is kind of what we needed to cover today, all right? How to cut out assets and then fill in information behind them. Um, so, like I said, I'm going to drop the image um, in the description below so you can follow along. And then, uh, in the next episode, I'll have this entire cherub cut up and ready for animation. Um, and we can then dive into After Effects and take a look at the actual animation before we then jump into adding audio and some final post-production. So this is gonna be a fairly, like a, like a short playlist of videos, essentially. But anyway, I'll stop rambling. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope that it was instructional. Again, any questions, any recommendations, any suggestions, drop them in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.